When you were a child, it must have been weird to learn that the Earth was round. If you were raised in Asia, it probably seemed ridiculous that Americans were hanging upside down by their feet and didn't fall off into the sky. But you got used to it. You probably found the idea of specifying systems with math strange enough. You will now learn things about TLA Plus that even sophisticated computer scientists find weird. But they're pretty simple things, and you'll get used to them. Eventually, you'll realize that without them, TLA Plus would be as weird as a flat Earth. Remember the transaction commit spec? It was in module TC commit and had a single declared variable RM state, an initial formula TC init, and the next state formula TC next. Its specification is therefore the temporal formula TC spec defined like this. Because it has only a single variable, we can omit the angle brackets and write the subscript simply like this. Module 2 phase contains this instance statement, which imports the definition of TC spec as well as all other definitions from module T commit. Module 2 phase also contains this theorem, which asserts that for every behavior, if the behavior satisfies TP spec, then it satisfies TC spec. In other words, every behavior that satisfies TP spec satisfies TC spec. This is what it means for TP spec to implement TC spec. Let TLC check this theorem by adding TC spec as a property to check in a model you constructed for module two phase. It should find no error. How can this theorem make sense? TP spec, which is defined in module two phase, is an assertion about behaviors whose states assign values to the four variables RM state, TM state, TM prepared, and MSGS. TC spec, which is defined in module T commit, is an assertion about behaviors whose states assign a value to the single variable RM state. Isn't this formula relating apples and oranges? I've said that a state is an assignment of values to variables, but what variables? Everything I've said so far has led you to believe that a state assigns values to the variables declared in the current module. But I've been fooling you because I wanted to delay hitting you with this bit of weirdness. A state actually assigns values to all possible variables. That's right to each of the infinite number of variables that you could, in principle, declare in a module. Weird, huh? Consider this state. I'm just showing the values it assigns to a few of the infinite number of variables. TC init is true on this state if and only if RM equals the set of three strings, R1, R2, and R3. That's because this is the definition of TC init. And this is the value of the variable RM state in that state. The only variable formula TC spec contains is RM state. So we can tell whether or not a behavior satisfies TC spec by looking only at the values assigned to RM state by each of the behavior states. All the other variables can have any values in any of its states. For example, in a behavior satisfying formula TC spec, variable TM prepared could equal this value in the first state, this value in the second state, this value in the third state, and so on. This seems weird to most people because they think of specifications as programs. Specifications are not programs, they're mathematical formulas. In math, when you write equations like this about the variables x and y, it doesn't mean that there's no variable z or w. The equations just say nothing about those other variables. It's useful to think about specifications as follows. 
A specification does not describe the correct behavior of a system. Rather, it describes a history of the universe in which the system and its environment are behaving correctly. The spec describes not only the system, but other parts of the universe that the system depends on. For example, the variable MSGS might describe an external communication mechanism such as TCP used by the two-phase commit protocol. The spec says nothing about parts of the universe that are not relevant to its abstraction of the system. Now we see that this theorem makes sense because formulas TP spec and TC spec are both assertions about the same kind of behavior, one whose states assign values to all variables. The theorem asserts that every behavior satisfying TP spec also satisfies TC spec. But how can this statement possibly be true? Formula TP spec is defined like this, where TP next allows TM abort steps, and TM abort is defined like this, so its unchanged conjunct allows only steps that leave RM state unchanged. TC spec is defined like this, where all TC next steps change the value of RM state. A TM abort step therefore can't be a TC next step. So how can a behavior satisfying TP spec also satisfy TC spec if it has a TM abort step? And how can this theorem be true? The answer to this question lies in the meaning of this part of the formula that we've been ignoring. The always formula is true on a behavior if and only if this formula is true on every step of the behavior. This formula is an abbreviation for the action TC next disjunction unchanged RM state. So the always formula asserts that TC next or unchanged RM state is true on every step, which is the same as the assertion that every step satisfies TC next or leaves RM state unchanged. If steps leaving RM state unchanged were not allowed by TC spec, then the theorem would not be true. Similarly, for the two-phase commit spec, this always formula is true on a behavior if and only if every step of the behavior satisfies the next state formula TP next or else leaves all the specification variables unchanged. Steps that leave all the spec's variables unchanged are called stuttering steps. Most people find stuttering steps weird. Every TLA plus spec allows them. If they didn't, the two-phase commit spec would allow the value of every variable in the universe to change only when the two-phase commit protocol took a step. And that would be really weird. But the most important reason to allow stuttering steps is embodied in this theorem. Implementation becomes simple logical implication. Mathematical simplicity is not an end in itself, but it is a sign that we're doing things right. Remember our first example, specification simple program of lectures one and two. It had two variables, PC and I, initial formula init, and next state formula next. Here's how we now write its specification as a temporal formula. Here's how we originally would have written a behavior satisfying this spec. In this lecture, we saw that the states of the behavior actually assign values to infinitely many other variables. Then we saw that the spec allows stuttering steps. It also allows stuttering steps at the end. In fact, it allows an infinite number of stuttering steps at the end. We represent a terminating or deadlocked execution by a behavior ending in an infinite sequence of stuttering steps. This is natural 
because a behavior represents a history of the universe, and the universe keeps going even if the system we're specifying terminates. This means that all behaviors are infinite sequences of states, so we don't have to consider finite behaviors. This specification is also satisfied by a behavior that starts in a state satisfying init, takes a step satisfying action next, takes a stuttering step, takes another stuttering step, and keeps on taking stuttering steps forever. All these stuttering steps are allowed by the spec. This behavior represents an execution in which the program stops before reaching a terminating state. All the specs we have written so far allow the system being specified to stop at any time by taking infinitely many stuttering steps. Our specs specify what the system may do. They don't specify what it must do. They allow it to do nothing. Exactly what may and must mean will be explained later. But they are very different kinds of requirements and they should be specified separately. We add must requirements by conjoining a temporal formula to the specification. How that's done is the main subject of the next lecture. The must formula is just a tiny part of a spec. The may formula is much larger and usually more important. With what you've learned so far, you can write specs that are quite useful even though they specify only what the system may do. You are now ready to be fruitful and specify, at least to specify what a system may do. In the next lecture, you learn how to specify what it must do.